For our first blind item, we have some Kardashian Jenner tea, and it reads, This actor has changed his phone number several times over the past couple months because he wants to break it off with the reality star, but then he changes his mind and the process repeats itself, which this is about Timothy, 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 Chamelay. I You guys always say in the comments I, I pronounce his name incorrectly, and I get it. But I know it's not like Shamalet, Timothy Shamalet, and of course Kylie Jenner. Now it seems like Kylie and Timothy are at this point in their relationship where they are a little bit toxic. They are at a rocky point where it doesn't seem like they know whether they're going to work out or not, which is kind of a weird place to be at, especially when we saw them at this award show and they act so lovey-dovey. This person commented, Timmy is whipped or something. Maybe the Kardashians have great drugs. Oh my gosh. This person wrote, Timothy trying to lose the Christian. Crabs are hard to get rid of. Another person wrote, Kylie must have a really crappy or void personality. Now, this is just my opinion, but I feel like one of the issues in their relationship relationship is that Kylie isn't easy to be with. She doesn't want her man taking pictures with other women. She probably doesn't want him on set getting close to other women. And he is a big time actress. And it seems like anyone he kind of works with or gets close to becomes an enemy of the Kardashians. Reports write that Kylie Jenner has a new enemy, fans say, after her rumored breakup with Timothy. The Kardashian star is said to be competing with actress Florence Pugh for Timothy's love and attention. Now, Florence and Timothy are both the same age, and they've been friends since starring together in the 2019 film adaptation of Little Woman. The actors played lovers in both movies, further establishing their chemistry. Now, some fans say that Florence has come between Timothy and Kylie, helping to contribute to their breakup, as they point to social media as proof. I mean, where there's smoke, there's fire. They continue in a move straight out of the keeping your friends close but your enemies closer playbook. Kylie followed Florence on Instagram more than a week ago. Now, I'm not keeping up with who is following who i mean i could care less but these people they have m hundreds of millions of followers and then you know they follow a few hundred people so when they do follow someone the super fans they notice quote florence has still not followed her back and it's been a full week she's been active on instagram so it's deliberate she's not gonna follow kylie someone wrote remember kylie forced herself in a picture with florence in paris Florence posted every pic she took with others, but not Kylie. This person added, I don't know why Kylie's trying so hard. If Tim is her real BF, then follow him and post him and get over with it. Here's a video of Kylie and Florence interacting, and honestly, they seem pretty friendly. But some people see this as a desperate move. This person wrote, this is so embarrassing. She's pretty much stalking his friends and co-stars. <laughs> Let's take a picture together. It's okay for you, Max? Max. Why? 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 Okay, ladies, ladies over here, please. In front of you, please. Flare, flare, flare. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you. In my videos, we talk about seeking justice all the time. We share stories about people who are taken advantage of in sketchy situations, or frankly, who just deserve better after a terrible outcome. Sometimes victims in these life-changing situations don't know what to do. That's when a law firm that you can trust, Morgan & Morgan, can step in. Finding the support and an honest lawyer who has your back isn't scary anymore. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury firm, which means if you you have gone through some incident that you think deserves compensation for, Morgan & Morgan has taken on any insurance company of any size. They do this so you can take care of yourself and self-care is important. By visiting my link below, you can fill out a form about your case in just minutes. I mean, this took me no time. And after that, you'll simply submit your form and relax because Morgan & Morgan can take it from here. For example, in 2023, their lawyers won a case for a family of a man named Amos. He was in a terrible accident involving a commercial vehicle that resulted in his past while Morgan and Morgan fought on his family's behalf and won them a $19 million settlement. If you, a family member, or anyone you know has been harmed in an accident, you can use my link in the description below to reach that simple Morgan and Morgan case form. That's where you can share your story and seek justice. Thank you, Morgan and Morgan, for sponsoring this video and enjoy. 
Now, because Florence and Timothy have worked together on set, they have played lovers in movies, people kind of see them as a potential relationship, which must be eating Kylie Jenner alive. Florence even once called Timothy baby while on set. This person wrote online, she calls him babe and baby. One fan swooned. I ship them so hard. Who's arrived? Who is it? It's Timmy! Back to you. <laughs> you were just talking about the fashion. I was like, ah! He looks amazing. Well done, babe. Sorry. You know what? Every time I think I know what he's going to do, he does the complete opposite and he kills it. He's a beautiful soul, a beautiful man, and he completely pushes everything. Fashion, choices. I mean, shoot. I mean, I feel like I'm the Kylie Jenner type because I would be worried that she liked my man as well because she does talk very highly of him. So they were on the red carpet together and people noticed that they, quote, look so good together. They seem genuinely comfortable in each other's company. They make sense. Another person added that she was on the red carpet with him, rubbing his back, rubbing his chest, randomly kissing him on the cheek. He was smiling and enjoying it. Neither of them cares about Kylie, which... I mean, if they were official, I, I mean, I would be a little bit team Kylie because I would feel so jealous and like uncomfortable and just like, I mean, it's just, if it's a little bit, if it's affectionate like this, yes, but also if they're not together, then go ahead and do your thing. And Kylie, I mean, I feel like she's someone who doesn't need to be insecure, but just looking at her, you know, she is, which is kind of sad. It doesn't really seem like there's much more hope for this couple. This person had a really good take. It's really over for Kylie now because Timothy has no more press to do and is going to be moving to New York and Montreal real soon for the Bob Dylan biopic, which starts filming in March. He's done with her. She didn't show up to his press event. She didn't show up to the movie premiere for Willy Wonka. So, I mean, maybe she's checked out as well. But if she was, then why is she following the, you know, the women who are closest to him? The, you know, the people who are rubbing his back and kissing him up on the red carpet. I mean, Kylie's obviously still pressed. No one ever really believed the A-list everything in her mind celebrity used her own beauty line, so it isn't a shocker that it is being pulled for low sales, which is about the forever delusional J-Lo beauty. And honestly, this is a good question because I think of all the celebrities and their makeup lines, like, you know, we got Rare Beauty with Selena Gomez, Lady Gaga has one, um, Rihanna. I wonder how many of them actually use their makeup. I mean, I feel like Selena does and like Rihanna does. I don't know about Lady Gaga. I mean, doesn't Ariana have one as well? I'm not sure. But Jennifer Lopez, I mean, really, have you heard anyone talk about JLo Beauty? This comment brings up a good point. They write, didn't she market a packaged cocktail despite not drinking herself? If so, this idea that she doesn't use her own beauty products, track. And I totally agree with that because she actually had an event like really close to where I live, like in my neighborhood. And uh, she went there to promote like this wine. But of course, she never even like drank the alcohol because she doesn't drink alcohol so why is she putting out alcohol when she doesn't even drink it i mean and she's putting out makeup that she doesn't even use probably because it's not great quality if you've used jlo beauty though comment below i'm interested to hear if you've actually participated another person wrote didn't she claim that she only used olive oil who's going to buy a different thing instead oh my gosh this person wrote I used JLo's butt cream daily for three months as part of a skincare study and it stung like hell but did nothing for my cellulite or anything else. I'm not surprised that people aren't willing to shell out hundreds of dollars for this snake oil. Another person wrote, JLo's best days are behind her and it's not because of her age, it's the fact that she is unlikable. I'm hoping the Jenners are next. I think we can all agree to this. Damn, JLo is having a bad year so far and it does seem that way because you know i even went to her movie premiere and i kind of liked it at first but then i thought about it a little bit more not the documentary we're making a video about the documentary that's coming out like really soon but uh no her music album and uh she really is just kind of missing the mark i don't i don't know what's going on i still have all my stage makeup on as you can see and i'm ready to wash it off Still, i like to put a little bit of water on it first and then we're going to use the cleanser that hits single it has a beautiful, beautiful texture. It's a brand new bottle. So I'm gonna use that. You could use the size of like a quarter. And you just... You don't even do it. 
Start washing it off. There we go. This headline reads, Jennifer Lopez slammed as inauthentic after her skincare line fails at Sephora. Everybody knows that she's not using that. Jennifer Lopez launched JLo Beauty in 2021 and it sold exclusively at Sephora. But according to store associates, the makeup and beauty store no longer has it on the shelves. I think we can all agree that Jennifer Lopez looks great, but she doesn't give very, you know, you know, I guess youthful or like, uh, I guess new or fresh in energy. So like, you know, a lot of these successful makeup lines and products, they're kind of indie or they're, you know, being pushed on TikTok. And it seems like JLo Beauty and everything she puts out is targeted towards a slightly older consumer base. Is the JLo Beauty brand flatlining? Despite her appearance and the fact that she could potentially have a successful beauty brand, it's lacking one thing that seems to be a common thread in all of her projects authenticity first of all it's difficult to believe the authenticity of the endorsement of her own products calling a 107 dollars serum her holy grail for her glow but never admitting to the fact that there are probably other products or potential procedures that also go into that this quote was taken from her website where she essentially says these products represent me authentically my values and how i live my life does it though? It's giving cringe. This person wrote LMAO embarrassed saying, I don't trust JLo Beauty because I don't think she actually uses it. The reason we wear FB Fenty Beauty uh, Fenty skin is because Rihanna actually uses it and it's something that you could tell that she's genuinely interested in. This is a cash grab for JLo. Which is kind of funny because JLo thinks that her name automatically makes her, you know, a cash grab but there's no cash coming in. Some more comments. I don't blame celebrities for hustling, but the way that JLo claims everything is olive oil and her dumb skincare line infuriates me so much. Another person added overpriced pieces of crap. It's inauthentic. I wouldn't buy it. Harry Styles seems to be dealing with some hairy issues. The foreign born former boy bander. <laughs> is shedding hair even more quickly than he was one trick might be to lay off the coke <gasps> okay also i have to say hair reveal i am really happy that i'm not like balding i mean i do have a little bit of like a receding hairline also i do have some pimple cream on so if you see a little like white stuff on my forehead like that's what it is i should like rub it off but i'm trying to like get my pimple gone you know what i mean i'm trying to live my life um so um where was I? I have a lot of empathy, sympathy, and love for the bald men out there. There are some beautiful bald men. Losing your hair is part of your life. I take, like, some pills and vitamins and things to, like, you know, keep my lus lus luscious, <laughs> keep my hair growing. But, uh, I don't want to shame anyone for losing their hair, but uh, let's talk about this Coke comment because that is catching me off guard. Someone wrote, Harry Styles had a hair transplant recently. The new hairline after the buzz cut is very obvious. Not sure the Coke makes sense if his hair fell out though. This person wrote, in my 20s, I thought British men lost their hair so quickly because they loved blow so much. LOL. Seriously, Prince Harry, Jude Law, Jude freaking Law. I don't really know who Jude Law is out of the a google search oops maybe i do um this person wrote yeah i don't think cocaine makes you lose your hair come on another person wrote that this is a lesser known side effect related to excess cortisol production now i'm no scientist so i have no idea what you're saying don't know who jude law is and i don't know how cortisol production is associated to cocaine who's most likely to go bald first <laughs> 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 Now, this is more of my language. Is Harry Styles going bald, and why does that even matter? Again, Harry Styles, I think he's fine. So, I mean, I don't know what he's going to look like bald, but uh, again, bald can be good. Bald can be great. Reports write, Harry Styles has been dogged for years by rumors that he is balding. This kind of scrutiny into celebrities' lives is nothing new, but it's interesting that something as common as male pattern baldness and other people's types of hair loss, especially in young presenting people, is treated as something both shameful and embarrassing. And I don't think it should be embarrassing at all. I don't love this photo because every time I look at it, like, doesn't it look like there's something behind his head? Is there? Like, my eyes are not focusing. Hold on, I'm gonna get close. Like, what is that? I don't know. Does he have something behind him or is that an art piece? Like, that's not sticking out this his head, right? 
I don't mind the shave cut. I'm here for it. Now, while I feel like Harry Styles seems like a very unbothered person, he may have gone to the doctors and gotten some work done. And if he did, good for him. Because I don't know what's going on with the whole hairline thing. But so many people in the world, men, are getting this hairline stuff. Do I need to get it, guys? Comment below. <gasps> See, this is a pimple I'm talking about. Oh, I read two. Two horns growing out. Thank God my hair parts this way, but it's probably part of the problem. You know what I mean? Anyways, did Harry Styles get a hair transplant? Who knows? He was spotted at the football match after he had a shaved buzz cut look. And he's growing his hair out, but it looks very different to where it used to be. I've spoken about Harry Styles' hairline in the past, and he is experiencing hair loss. They were more significantly receded previously. However, at present, this isn't as bad as how it used to be. Looking at previous pictures of him, you can see that his hairline was significantly worse. Looking at him now, there seems to be significant improvement. You could argue that yes, in the previous picture, his hair was longer and it was brushed backwards. At present, his hair is much shorter and he seems to have brushed it forward. So it is covering up the corner. But from my opinion, in terms of being a hair transplant surgeon, if this is not a hair transplant specifically, he definitely has had some form of therapy, whether that's medical therapy, whether that's PRP, into the area to help sustain the hairline, strengthen the hairline and minimize the hair loss that he is experiencing. How many days of a residency do you have to do to pay off mid eight figures? I guess this A-list singer is going to find out. Bruno Mars. You may have seen this in the news, but Bruno Mars has a Vegas residency and he's been working there. And I guess after his shows, he likes to go and gamble a little bit or a lot of it, like at the high stakes tables, which means you are betting millions of dollars. So he is then losing millions of dollars. This person wrote, that explains why Bruno keeps adding more dates to his tour schedule. Another person wrote, Bruno Mars and his $50 million gambling debt. Another person wrote, what a shame. He's such a talented musician, singer, dancer. I wish he'd stop his self-destructive behavior. This person added, I agree. He is insanely talented. Also, he has a great charisma. This person wrote, he's been a big gambling fan for years and racked up $50 million in debt to the casino that's paying him $1.5 million a night for his residency. The relationship between Bruno Mars and MGM have gone sour as the singer's gambling has allegedly racked up large debts at the tables in Las Vegas. Quote, MGM basically owns him. He makes $90 million a year off the deal he did with the casino, but then he has to pay it back in his debt. And it doesn't seem like Bruno Mars is going to, you know, pay his debt and then go to, like, cause, you know, a rehab for uh, gambling anytime soon because they are literally building cocktail lounges and restaurants that are a part of him and his residency and his presence in Vegas. So he is well known there and he is a big spender and he needs to, you know, win to go and make up some of this, you know, debt. Came all the way to Vegas to help you with your gambling debt. Let's go. Hey guys, so everybody's been wondering what we're gonna do with the dollar for Bruno Mars. Um, actually, I've got an envelope here addressed to Bruno Mars from MGM Grand. We're gonna put this in the envelope and try to get it over to him. So stay tuned. Now, people can poke fun at Bruno Mars all day, and it is a weird situation to be in because, like, you know, he makes a lot of money, but he's spent a lot of money, but gambling is a real problem. In an interview, Bruno Mars opened up about the first time he visited a casino when he was 19 years old. Cool, I remember my first bet. My hand was shaking, and a guy called me out on it and embarrassed me. Bruno said, you gotta lose. You just gotta lose to win, to understand. During his carpool karaoke with James Gordon, ugh. If you're a James Gordon fan, comment below. I just want to see if you guys exist. Bruno briefly revealed that he was able to make rent while living in LA by playing cards for a little while. You catch this moment in this video. So he's been, you know, gambling for a very long time. It's nothing new. He just now has this consistent $1.5 million a night. And then he's, you know, blowing three. When you move to LA, is it true that you will pay your rent by playing cards? For a little while, yeah. Give me your best poker face. Give me the face that says... I got it. No, you haven't got it, but give me the face that says you have got it.
Now, of course, news of this debt isn't a good look for MGM or Bruno Mars or their working relationship. So even though I completely believe that this debt is here and that he does owe this money, MGM put out an official statement denying that Bruno Mars is in debt. And they're not trying to ruffle any feathers because they don't want that relationship to go sour. Even though it probably is because we wouldn't have heard of this story if it wasn't going bad in the first place. Oh, let's get into this one. When you are too high to perform and only have a half filled arena and you are not getting paid because you owe so much money, if you are a foreign born rapper, you cancel your gig, which is all about Nicki Minaj supposedly being on drugs, not selling out arenas. It's not giving Beyonce's tour. It's not giving Taylor Swift's tour. Not saying that Nicki Minaj is not talented, but a lot of big tours have happened recently and hers is just not turning out the way I think she wanted it to. This person wrote, Mama Bear's downfall has been spectacular to watch could have happened to a worse person anyways just bought tickets to megan the stallion's tour oh people are still going off that megan and nikki feud is that still going on i feel like we haven't gotten any updates like they definitely haven't made up this person asks how does nikki have fans left after her recent multi-day coke fueled rampage the general public never ceases to amaze me someone else added that they had a show in new orleans and they advertised that the show was sold out out, but a bunch of people said that it wasn't. Well, Nicki Minaj's team's official statement said that she needed to cancel her show due to the doctor's orders. Reports write that Nicki's fans were left disappointed Monday night after she canceled her show hours before the concert. She said, as Nicki is still sick, our team does not want to run the risk of getting others sick, so Nicki will not be able to perform tonight. They claim they were working diligently to find a new date, so please hold on to your tickets, aka no refund and i guess she might be back Nicki minaj canceled this date on her pink friday 2 tour just hours before she was about to hit the stage while the article states that there was no reason given for the cancellation fans know that Nicki minaj has been feeling under the weather for the past couple of days now she recently took the station head and she said how she had the flu which was accompanied by migraines and body aches now this was shortly before rolling loud and she reassured fans that she would be re-energized and ready to hit the stage well it's looking like the flu has caught up to her because Nicki is not filling up for doing this new orleans show this situation is so unfortunate especially due to the fact that Nicki Minaj has been doing sold out shows in every city she has went to. Now concert goers are obviously going to be upset about this, especially people who were traveling from out of town. The lady cannot help it that she is sick. Fans were not happy. This person wrote, she ain't just get sick a few hours ago. This should have been announced, you know, yesterday morning or uh, sometime, you know, before a few hours because a lot of people will travel for a show. They will fly for a show. So like telling people a couple hours right before is really inconvenient. Another person wrote, I bought a flight. Can she reimburse me? Because I could be at home working, not stuck hours and states away from home. Another person added, I just drove all the way to New Orleans. Her health is important, but I wish they said something earlier. If she is sick, we are wishing her well wishes, but uh, it seems like they might need to revamp that tour or something. If you guys are going on her tour, comment below. Or if you're going to Megan the Stallion, I'm interested. But I hope you guys enjoyed our blind item breakdown. I know you guys like these videos. I love doing these videos, and I am so happy to be done traveling and to be back home in my studio. I was, I've been actually really tired in this video, so I'm sorry if I like seem really tired but you know i know i want to get it done for you guys for thursday and look at my cup it came so quickly like look how quickly it came and look how pretty it is i this is like the only podcast i watch every week on i'm like i have a dream to interview her or go on her show or anything i just love trisha Pita so much i've emailed her a ton but look i also bought her like magazine thing she did not the Rolling Stone. I'm trying to figure out how to get that one, but the other one she did. It's in my guest room. So cute. Love it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in a new one soon. Watch my other videos, but, you know, blind item breakdown every Thursday. See you there. Bye, guys.